In the world of Monster Hunter, some of the strongest creatures can have the most strangest abilities, such as Valhazak being able to infect other creatures and control them along with their corpses, the Elatrion having the same powers of the true Elder Dragons and several elemental powers, Gore and Shigaru Magala's control over the Frenzy Virus, and a whole wide variety of other abilities. These abilities are oftentimes why a monster is referred to as so powerful in the universe, why they almost never have to fear being hunted. But you don't need to have some wild, crazy ability to be strong. You don't need a special power to be seen as one of the most feared hunters in the old and new world, in Kamora and Elgato. Sometimes a little can go a long way. Today I'm going to be talking about the simplicity of the T-Grex. At first glance, you can think of the T-Grex's design as simple. The body of a quadrupedal wyvern, color scheme of a tiger, and the head of a tyrannosaurus. Not as intricate or complicated like the designs of other monsters throughout the series. But with these three choices, it's more than enough for it to live a long life in a dangerous world of Monster Hunter. The Tigrex is described as nomadic. Unlike other very territorial monsters like the Elatrion living in a sacred land, or a solitary monster like the Valstrax living above the clouds. In several cutscenes of a lot of the games, it can be seen hunting around in a variety of biomes, like the Frost Islands or hunting around in a hot environment like the Sandy Plains. Its simple wyvern body is what helps regulate its body temperature. There are several ways for it to keep its temperature stable. Through thermal inertia, it's able to keep its body temperature consistent whether it's in the desert or snow. It's a fairly active animal, and of course the more you move around, the warmer your body will get. Having a lot of muscle mass helps a lot too at a higher body temperature. Not to mention, muscle does several things like produce heat naturally. So even if the T. rex is able to put on body fat, muscle naturally helps burn the fat, so it will just create even more heat. A lot of people view its wings as vestigial, that they serve no purpose when in fact they do. They can act like mini solar panels to help the T. rex absorb more heat when it's laying in the sun. If it needs to reduce its body heat, it can extend its wings to lower its temperature, though if it needs to keep the heat, it will simply close them. Its high amount of muscle mass can serve several purposes besides retaining and generating heat. Obviously with so much compact muscle mass, the Tigrex is one of the physically strongest flying wyverns and maybe one of the strongest wyverns in general, at least when it comes to brute strength. Even the handler describes it as a giant ball of muscle right after overpowering a Radabon mid-charge and killing it easily. The exact weight of a Radabon isn't official. It is stated at around 30 feet tall and 60 feet long, assuming that its body weighs around 12,000 to 15,000 pounds and going on a charge at a downward angle, the T-Rex was able to take a direct hit right to the chest and be able to slow it down in just a couple seconds. Not just that, but lift the Radabon over its head, smash it into the ground, casually restrain it and easily kill it, and it was still in perfect condition to fight the hunter afterwards. Its T-Rex head, which is of course the second half of its name, also plays into the simplicity a little bit too. And of course, it's what it uses to bite down on its prey. And just like the T-Rex, having one of the largest bite forces of any animal, it would also apply to the T-Rex, and of course be much stronger than the regular Rex as well. In nature, Oftentimes when a large animal is being hunted, like an elephant or a giraffe, the hunters will usually be a group of animals ganging up on it, like a pride of lions or a cackle of hyenas hunting down an elephant or a giraffe. Very rarely will you see a single predator take on a target that is so much larger than them single-handedly. But that's different with the T. grex. Maybe it's the first part of its name, giving it the independence of a tiger with how tigers usually hunt prey of any size all by themselves. Tigrex is a solitary predator that will gladly hunt down groups of large popo or even take on fully grown gametes. Gametes, who are also in an aggressive state, since usually it will be a mother being very protective of her young. During gameplay, even smaller monsters like bird wyverns, such as the Kuluyaku, can smash through stone pillars, which could equate to several tons of force. Yet Kuluyaku definitely can be one of the most common prey for Tigrex, especially if it's living in the sandy plains, and it should very well be able to easily overpower Kuluyaku as well. It also has a charging attack that basically makes other structures in its way, such as stone pillars, seem like they're made of wet paper. Most monsters have some sort of a range attack, like Magnamala's Hellfire ability, or Valstrax's Dragon Energy Beam. But the Tigrex's simple form of a range attack is literally just chucking rocks at the hunter, which is Pretty funny to me, but also rather effective too, and pretty accurate. And just like most monsters, this one also has a second phase, which is just a simple rage mode becoming stronger, faster, and tougher. Through controlling its own heart, it can accelerate its circulation many times faster, pumping blood more intensely, making the muscles harder and stronger, and making itself tougher and faster. Its blood pumps so fast it literally starts steaming, and its veins are visible even through its thick hide. But thankfully it's just a short burst. One of the more signature abilities is also its roar. 
being so powerful that it can literally knock out a quarter of your health, even with good armor. And we're lucky that it's just a short range, as even a normal roar, which is basically what every monster does when it spots you, still does heavy damage. It's able to pull this off with having an enlarged larynx and forcing air out like a giant huff. In its turf wars with other monsters will you rarely see being overpowered, as physical strength is literally its main ability. It even has a subspecies called the Brute Tigrex, which is even much stronger. I am honestly surprised why it's classified as a Brute Wyvern, but I get why it's classified as flying. I feel like the Tigrex is a great monster for newcomers literally because of its simplicity. It can teach the hunter how to block, dodge attacks, counter, get used to roars, dodge projectiles, fighting off amp states that so many monsters have. It's an amazing and fun hunt. The armor and weapons are great despite not having any elements attached to them. And just like the T-Rex's physical strength, the strength on the weapons are insane. And they're not even enhanced with things like poison or dragon energy. Its turf wars are so entertaining too. It's like watching two wrestlers trying to powerbomb each other over and over. Its way of fighting is so fun since it just uses simple brute strength instead of some unique style. There's just a type of charm to this creature. I think that the T-Rex is a perfect example of simple being better. Its simple design, which is also described as being prehistoric, and simple abilities benefited so much that it doesn't need some weird mutant X-Men hacks ability. It doesn't need to be able to cut through space-time and absorb energy from the Earth. It relies on its muscle, it relies on its simplicity, and that's all it needs. The little does go a long way, and despite how simple it is, the creation behind it is simply genius. Let me know what you think about the video, so like, comment, and subscribe. I have the links to my webcomic Celestial Guardians Cosmic Quartet in the description, links to my other socials as well. Thanks for watching.